Okay, well, um, before I took part in soap cycling as an intern last semester, I was very much involved um, with an organization called Enactus. We actually have a chapter here at HKU, and Enactus is actually a social entrepreneurship club, and it consists of HKU students who are really passionate about creating social change, um, specifically focusing on issues pertaining to Hong Kong, using you know the power of business or whatever. And so what we did was we got together, um, we kind of created and tried to implement small-scale sustainable businesses, and of course with like a strong social focus. Um, and so prior to taking part in soap cycling, my understanding of social entrepreneurship was essentially um, a business that was commercial, that was making money, um, but the profits were reinvested into the business to sustain it. Um, and I guess the main way to measure the success of a social entrepreneur enterprise business was, you know, the, the amount of social impact. So before I entered soap cycling, um, while I was doing work with Enactus, my idea of what social entrepreneurship was was essentially creating um, small-scale sustainable businesses um, to achieve a certain social purpose or goal. But after soap cycling, I realized that the idea of social entrepreneurship is kind of more of a broad topic that encompasses a lot of different things. For example, soap cycling is a great um, example of how social entrepreneurship can take the form of a nonprofit organization that uses a lot of commercial ways to achieve its means um, and to do a lot of fantastic things for people around the world. Um, yeah, actually, um, Throughout the semester, I was involved um, in both the marketing, with both the marketing team and the service learning team. And the service learning team and I, we actually attended a conference um, called the Gin Conference at um, an international school in Kowloon. And there, we were able to speak in front of a classroom of students talking about what soap cycling does, what it seeks to achieve, um, how the kids can get involved, and so forth. And actually, a group of kids reached out to us and said, "Oh, you know, we're going." on a service trip um, to various Southeast Asian countries. It'd be fantastic if we can bring a few boxes of soap on, and it was fantastic. And actually, um, I was at the warehouse a few weeks later, and I bumped into the kids, and we actually um, spent time as a group, you know, scraping and processing the soap together, and this was the soap that would be sent um, along with them on, on their mission trip um, to various Southeast Asian countries. So it was interesting to see the process. Um, of kind of telling people about soap cycling, getting them interested, coming, getting them to come to the warehouse to scrape the soap and having them you know, deliver boxes to people who really need them. So that was definitely a highlight for me last semester. That's a very um, interesting question. It's a very good question. Um, and it's definitely, I think, difficult to answer. But for me, the main distinction between social um, entrepreneurship and um, kind of the other things that you listed was that is that social enterprises um, tend um, to have a very, um, although have a very social focus, um, they're essentially run like a business or a commercial venture. So the way that you achieve kind of your ultimate means to impacting people's lives, whether it's um, through providing employment to people who really need it or finding a solution to the poor waste management solution. Um, you approach it very much kind of like a business. Um, and I think the way that social entrepreneurship differs from CSR initiatives and charities is that it provides a long-term sustainable solution, whereas you know, when you're making a donation to a charity, it's a very one-off contribution. CSR initiatives really roll out for a very set period of time. Whereas social enterprises are businesses that are made uh, and are built or work in a way that you know, the profit generated sustain itself or the returns um, that they make sustain the business. And so it helps people in the long term and I believe is a more sustainable solution and I think a lot more effective than a lot of you know, charities, CSR initiatives that do exist today in Hong Kong especially. Um, the last thing I'd like to mention is that you know, working as an intern at Soap Slide last semester was such a rewarding experience. Um, I'd rec really recommend it to anyone. I think soap cycling really does kill two birds with one stone. Um, on one hand, it's 
providing such a simple yet effective way to reduce waste in Hong Kong on a daily basis, while at the same time, you know, getting soap out there to families and children who really need them, which can serve as, you know, a life-saving remedy. Um, while I was working at Soap Cycling, I learned so many things, such as how a nonprofit organization runs, um, you know, what makes fantastic leaders, you know, certain qualities that David and Lauren had that I really admired, and also how to work effectively as a team. And so for HKU students who are looking for kind of an alternative um, educational experience, I would definitely recommend that they sign up for the um, internship course. Um, and for volunteers that have, you know, some few, like a few hours to spare a week to head out to the warehouse to scrape soap um, and tell process it for people who really need it. Um, for students at HKU who are looking kind of for an alternative educational experience, I really recommend that they sign up for, for the social venture internship course, especially um, to work at Soap Cycling because it was such a great um, learning experience for me. And I think also for people who have a few hours to spare away, it would be fantastic for them to head out to the warehouse um, to process the soap so we can get it out to people who truly need them.